We're going to talk some baseball with him. Of course, Bart is the uh, television play-by-play announcer for uh, a ton of Mississippi State SEC Network Plus games, works with the uh, Mississippi State Radio Network from Learfield, and does lots of other things. Like maybe even calls you and asks you to uh, donate money to Mississippi State. And I'm sure he would take your phone call if you were uh, interested in doing that this afternoon. Bart, what's up, my man? Oh, not too much. How are you guys doing? Always appreciate uh, a little bit of your time, especially as uh, as we begin another edition of uh, Mississippi State and Ole Miss in uh, in baseball. We're closing in on 500 all time meetings between these two teams. It goes all the way back to 1893. This has been a, a strange year for college baseball with Mississippi State and with Ole Miss, and I'm not sure it's a year that any of us expected coming into the season. No, not at all. I don't. And when you look at the not just Mississippi State and Ole Miss. I mean, you look at Vanderbilt. I mean, you look at like at Florida. I mean, all these teams that early in the year you thought were going to be really good. And I think the bottom of the league has gotten better, to be quite honest with you. I don't think there's many dogs like you've had in years past. But I guarantee you, you ask Mike Bianco, you ask Chris Lamolis, you ask Tim Corbin. I mean, they have not played to expectations. Nobody's played to expectations this year. And so it's a if one game is hitting, one game is pitching, one game is fielding. It's, it's, it's one of those deals of like uh, Vegas vacation. You know, you put the, the, uh, the bubble gum in one hole and the, the water comes from another. And so um, this is a weekend. I still think there's enough talent on both of these teams that if they could get things going starting this weekend, that, uh, that you have a chance to make a run, whether it be State or Ole Miss. So Mississippi State, I thought really showed some signs of life last weekend. That was a critical weekend series. They're able to get two against Auburn. Yeah, they swing the bats well in the midweek, but it was no disrespect. But Jackson State, not not a very good baseball team. So I I don't know that you can necessarily take anything from that. Thinking back to the way the three games played out last weekend for Mississippi State, is it possible to call that weekend a turning point, or is it just kind of grinding through and they were able to get a couple? I think it was a grind through, to be honest with you. And I think everything's going to be a grind through. There, there's so many questions to be answered. You, you've lost some, so many guys pitching-wise from a health standpoint this year. And then you may have lost a couple more last weekend. We don't know. What is the, you know, what's the health issues right now of a, of a Brooks Auger, who's been a really good on the back end for you? That's one of the yeah. big things for State this year, and it's been a big thing for Ole Miss as well, is just trying to find guys to fill innings on that back end. You know, State has felt like they've gotten the starts they needed to last weekend. And I think that's probably one of the differences when you look at that Auburn series compared to weeks before that is Brandon Smith gave you a good game one star. Preston Johnson has been solid. I think Kate Smith probably has been you know, the, the most competitive and uh, been, has been the best guy to be out for the weekend rotation in game three. And so I think that's one of the positives about last weekend. Is trying to you know, fill the gap on the front end and got you starting pitching. But you know, when you put Brandon Smith in starting role, once again, you lose one of your big horses in the bullpen because he was a long way type guy. Bart, it's so different from last year with State in the pitching depth. And, you know, last year when you went to the bullpen, you had quality guys. There. You had a guy like Preston Johnson there. Obviously, you had Landon Sims there. Can State win games this weekend or, or any weekend where the starters don't go deep into, into the game? Well, you can win you know, one or two, uh, you, well, one, you know you can. Um, but that's the question with Brandon Smith moving to that Bart, role. Bart, I hate to do this, but you've turned into a, a robot. You, you sound like a robot. And this is like the uh, the power of the Internet. It happens that way sometimes. We're going to hang up and we're going to call you. We're going to go back to the old trusty phone line. We'll finish this conversation with Bart Gregory on the Farm Bureau phone line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team, Mississippi Farm Bureau. If you're watching on C Spire TV, you got to see the cool backdrop. Where, where is Bart's office? It's not in the baseball it's stadium. It's the Bryan building. Okay. No, so it's in the Bryan building. Okay. I, I, I just couldn't tell exactly what that was. Not named after me. The, spelled differently, even it, right? Yes, it is. It's with a Y, yes. You know, if you had produced somewhere in the neighborhood of a million hot dogs a week for, oh, I don't know, 50 years, maybe you would have a building on Mississippi State's campus named for you as well. There's a joke to be made in there, but we'll leave, we'll let it lie. Yes, uh, yes. So we will uh, we'll connect again with Bart in, uh, in just a second. 
Uh, Sports Talk Mississippi streaming at supertalk.fm and supertalktv.com. Great to be with you on this Thursday afternoon. You can be a part of the conversation on the ceasefire text line, 601-879-4395. Again, 601-879-4395. So much good stuff happening at ceasefire. Make sure that you've got their business internet. You can find out whether fiber is available in your area by going to ceasefire.com slash business. Will, are we good or there we go. Uh, sorry, Bart, uh, that was rude of us to interrupt you mid-sentence like that, but uh, I think this is going to be more clear. Yeah, probably so. And then going into that fundraising mode, I guess we, uh, the Internet uh, here in the office probably needs an upgrade. So if uh, you could call me on my cell if we'd like to, to get, get you in a major gift, we can do that. <laughs> There you go. All right, so so you were talking about bullpen this season compared to last season and kind of what Mississippi State doesn't have. And I think Haydad was asking about whether or not this week or any week Mississippi State can go out and win games with so many pieces missing potentially in the bullpen. Well, and I think here's what's going to have to happen. If, if you go on the road and if you were to win two games without getting depth in your starting roles, you're going to have to have a Jackson Fristo who comes out and throws extremely well. You're going to have to have a Drew Talley on the back end as well. Um, you know, Brandon Smith being in that starting role, uh, he takes a lot away a lot of safety blanket for you out of that bullpen. And so a Pico Khan, who's a freshman left-hander, a Mikey Tepper, a Cam Tuller, those guys are going to have to pitch a little bit better than they have pitched in recent weeks. I mean, you keep seeing and you keep waiting – uh, you see the stuff of Jackson Fristo, and you keep on saying sooner or later that guy's going to figure it out. And he pitched very well at Arkansas a few weeks ago in a very hostile environment. And so uh, you kind of feel like if you don't get that starting pitching, like Brian was alluding to a minute ago, can you win a game without going deep with your stars? It's going to be tough. But one of those guys, if you can do it, like a Jackson Fristo, is going to have to pitch very, very well. Talk to me about Hunter Hines. He, he he is the freshman that reminds you of who as a freshman? Oh, man. Um, I'm saying a left-handed hitting Connor Powers is what I'm saying. Okay. I like that. Connor Powers played 2007, 2010. Uh, of course, you know, Connor was a right-handed hitter, and I actually just talked to Connor this past week. And uh, Hunter Hines, the thing that they have that you can't teach is fast hands. If you get a ball in on him, he can he can turn on it in a hurry. And uh, th- that's something you just can't teach. He doesn't have a slow bat. So many times as freshmen, especially bigger guys, they come in and you know, they've got tremendous power and they're trying to drive it out of the ballpark and they have a long, slow swing, and he doesn't have that. He's got a quick barrel to the bat and a uh, barrel to the ball. So he, he's really been good. Um, you know, in that DH role, lefties, righties, he went through a tough spell. And as you guys know, you're going to go through that freshman wall sometime, whether it be game 20, 30, 40, somewhere down the line, he hit that freshman wall. And sometimes freshmen can't come out of it. It looked like last weekend he began began to come out of it. And so uh, that was a positive thing for, for State. And to have him in that uh, middle of the order it gives you some legitimate pop. And so, yeah, it was really good to see him come back on strong last weekend. Who's the most Born, important I was telling... player for Mississippi State not on the mound? What would you say? I'm sorry. No, I just said, who's the, the most important player for Mississippi State not on the mound? Oh, I mean, um, you know, I think, to be honest with you, we fielded it enough, so I don't know if you go with anybody actually in the field. Uh, I think at the plate, I'm telling you this, I think the most important player is going to be R.J. Yeager this weekend. And I'm going to say, you know, two or three guys. One is R.J. Yeager at the top of the order. The other is Cameron James in the two-hole. The other Luke Hancock in the three-hole. And it's not because of them individually. It's because they're at the top of the order. And if you look at success that Mississippi State has had against Ole Miss in the past several years, one is you had a Jake Mangum at the top of the order, a Luke, Luke Alexander. Uh, over the past couple of years, you've had a Rowdy Jordan and a Tanner Allen. You've got to have the top of your order this weekend play at a, an above-average level. And R.J. Yeager has done that in league play. I mean, R.J. is leading this team and hitting – from that leadoff spot is batting 349 with seven home runs in league play. So you're getting some pop out of your bat in the leadoff position. And so you talk about Hunter Hines a minute ago. I think those top three guys in the order, R.J. Yeager, Cameron James in the two spot, then Luke Alexander, excuse me, uh, Luke Hancock in the three-hole, 
those are the guys that are probably the most important guys this weekend just to get something going at the top of that order. So, so Jaeger gets the big piece of chicken. Is that what you're telling us? <laughs> Jaeger has a chance to get the big old uh, breast piece of chicken. <laughs>